Hello and welcome to the Miniatures Apocathere Umbral Wolves painting video. Now I know what you're thinking. Minute, you said you just used the GW How to Paint Lunar Wolves painting scheme. And that would be true. However, since I made that statement, there's been a few changes. So let's get going, shall we? So first off, you want to prime your model with Corax White. And then in true hobby meme fashion, we coat the entire mod miniature in null oil. This will help with the shading for the next step. So the next step is the Zenithal technique with Pallid Witch Flesh. Now as I haven't sorted out an airbrush, I'm doing this by hand, just with a wide brush. And you may want to do this two or three times just to get one solid coat uh, across the sort of highlighted areas. The next step is to pick out all the metallic areas. I prefer to use a lead belcher, but a lighter colour like Ironbreaker will also do. After that you want to start picking out things like the shoulder pad rim and the Aquila and the casing on the bolt gun. I've got into the habit of using Black Templar Contrast more than using uh, Abaddon Black. I find it goes on a lot easier, it's a lot quicker and it looks a lot nicer finish as well. So once the contrast paint has dried, we use Agrax Earthshade to cover the metallics as well as pick out uh, recess points across the armour where you would expect to see a build up of dirt and grime. Then you can go one step further by watering down Typhus Corrosion. I do a 2 to 2 ratio uh, and then I use this to darken specific areas mostly on the bottom half of the armour around the feet and the shin guards as well as uh, trickling small amounts within the metallics uh, of the soft armour. I've been playing around with typhus, watering down Typhus Corrosion and adding other textures and colours recently. I'm going to cover that in another video at a later date uh, once I've refined a couple of techniques. At this point we start working on the leather for the pouches and the uh, combat blade. So I use start with Rhinox Hide. Uh, and then start to build up weathering.
Then we pick out the eye lenses. So I start off with a Caliban green to start off with. Uh, and then I either use a Bealtan green wash or Nuln oil uh, before highlighting. So I use Retributor Armor for the bolt casings that can be seen within the drum and then give, generally give them a wash of Agrax Earthshade afterwards. At this stage, I've got into the habit of adding transfers using water, Citadel Ardco and Lamy Medium. This just means that when it comes to doing the paint chipping later on, they don't stand out and they don't look like they're out of place. And then it's time for some highlights, starting with Moot Green for the eye lenses. We then use Mechanicum Standard Grey to highlight the black areas like the gun casing, shoulder pads and backpack. And to this point I'd just like to point out that this video would not have been possible if it wasn't for the use of the Grim Grip that I've been using throughout the entire video. If anyone is interested in the Grim Grips there will be a link in the description below. They are currently on sale in Canada and the US and should be on sale for the UK and EU within the next couple of weeks. I know I speak for myself and many other people who suffer from uh, tremors. Uh, due to poor mental health or physical conditions these things are absolutely fantastic they have really helped me up my game when it comes to painting and it's meant that I can continue to do the hobby that I enjoy
Next step is to start weathering the leather. This is something that I've only really started looking into and doing a lot more recently. Using Vermin Brown, I start off by edge highlighting everything and then using the brush in a quick motion uh, to build up a series of uh, small lines which will eventually look like cuts and tears in the leather. Then we use Screaming Skull, just as we used the Vermin Brown in the previous stage, in the exact same way. Start off by edge highlighting and then quick motions with the brush to build up the, uh, the weathering effect.
For a final highlight, we use Iron Breaker across the Aquila on the chest, just helps the, it to stand out. So we could stop there and that would look like a really nice miniature, however we are going to carry on and we're going to add the chipping and battle damage effects. So we start off with Lead Belcher on a sponge, uh, make sure obviously you haven't got too much on but you want just enough on that it's going to leave those marks. They will gradually build up alongside the other colours in these, in these final stages to give a nice effect for chipping and general sort of battle damage, wear and tear. For the next step we use Abaddon Black. With each different colour scheme of Marines I find it's a good idea to change up what colours you have in the battle damage stages. For some using the highlight and a metallic and a typhus corrosion is enough but with others especially with lighter colours using a black or dark brown works best, works well as well.
And for the final stage, we have Typhus Corrosion. Don't forget, if you use too much of this, it'll leave an unsightly blob. If you don't use enough, then you won't get a residual mark from where the sponge has been, and you'll have to keep redoing it until you get that effect. And there you have it, a fully battle damaged Umbral Walls Intercessor. Now I've left the base because you decide where these warriors fight. Personally I've gone for a Martian Iron Crust and Riser Rust combo. The Riser Rust dry brushed on looks really nice, especially on the lower quarters of the model to act as weathering. I hope you've all enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. For the Emperor!